For our next section, we are going to be talking about discrete random variables. And this really is a continuation of our discussion of probability. Uh, however, we're going to be focusing on a specific type of data uh, known as discrete random variables. And so if we remember, we've uh, earlier on we talked about all of our different types of data that we usually work with, like ordinal, um, we have nominal, continuous, and this one is discrete. So when we are looking at our possible outcomes, they have to be going in some sort of step. Now the step size can be odd, um, but we're not going to be able to do every possible outcome uh, on some segment of a number line. Uh, there are going to be discrete things that we can actually be. So yeah, we're dealing with numerical discrete data, and we are going to be talking about like how can we um, play around with their probabilities in a slightly different way than we've done before. So uh, to get started, let's consider uh, once again rolling a dice. So as we've done before, we can always start off uh, with our sample space being one, two, three, four, five, and six. And this would be our sample space. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a new tool uh, to try to organize our possible outcomes. Okay, so instead of just kind of writing this out or maybe drawing out a sample space, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a new type of table. And this table has a couple of new elements to it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write up a little x here. And in our this x column, this is going to be all of our possible outcomes. And it is called specifically the support. So I'm going to put here, this is outcomes. And as a whole, it's called the support. Now, the support has to have like all possible outcomes of our random event. And remember, like a random event, we, we can't know like what's going to happen uh, beforehand. So like a dice is a good example of our random event. And all possible outcomes of this specific random event uh, would be the following. So we've got, instead of writing it like this, I'm just going to start with the smallest at the top and move my way down. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so that's all of my possible outcomes. All right, fair enough. Now the next column over, what I am going to do is we are going to write the probability of success for each of those. All right, so if we do that, we call this the probability that our discrete random variable is going to be equal to a specific member of the support. All right, so once again, let, let me try to explain this again. So this little equation, this little probability statement is I'm saying, what is the probability that this capital X, so when I try to do that capital X, I'll try to put on uh, those big tails on the top and bottom. So what's the probability that the random event is going to equal any specific possible outcome, or the x's. Okay, so with our dice, this one's pretty easy. We know that in order to find the probability of any given event, it's going to be the number of outcomes uh, in the event divided by the number of outcomes in the sample space. All right, so that still holds true. So we know that the probability for this first one is 1 6. We know for this next one, it's going to be 1 6. Next one, 1 6 and just moving our way on down. Okay, so this guy, how we have this written, it has a specific name, and this guy is equal to what we call the PMF. And the PMF has a name to it, so it stands for the probability probability mass function. 
Okay, so you, it's called like the probability mass function because each of these particular outcomes have some like probability mass to them. They each are possible to happen. And so we see that the one is one six, next one is one six, all the way down. And what must be true is that this column right here, the PMF, uh, the sum of it equals one. Where if we sum up the probabilities of all possible outcomes, they equal to one. And that is, that's just kind of one of the rules of our PMF, that the PMF sum must equal one. Uh, another one is that all probability, or all outcomes need a probability. And then one more, all probabilities must be between 0 and 1 inclusive. Notice how I use those square brackets. Remember, the square brackets mean we include the values 0 and 1. All right, so that's just like a really basic kind of general idea of how these uh, discrete random variables actually work um, and how we can set them up. And like if we look at all of this, this is actually really familiar. These rules are basically the same as the rules that we've been using with our probability statements. And we just have kind of a new way of how we are organizing our data. So I really wanted to kind of make sure that we solidify this, that this probability mass function is saying, what's the probability that the random event that we roll the dice What's the probability that it equals a specific member of the support? So, or a specific outcome. So the probability that our dice roll, that capital X, is equal to the number three, little x, is equal to one, six. So we will continue working on this and exploring some other possibilities of how we can use our discrete random variables in some other scenarios. Uh, but this is kind of our introduction uh, to these kind of probability tables and our probability mass functions.